Today I'm going to take a look at this Sierra Wireless MP GPRS 750 modem. This unit is standalone and it, it has an audio jack and an RF connection, presumably for the cellular antenna, but for external stuff it's only got USB host and serial host and some kind of custom uh, you know, proprietary interface for the I.O. What exactly this thing does, I'm not 100% sure. I, I'm not sure if it actually provides a network connection through the USB connection. It may provide it through this thing, but I don't have, uh, I don't have that cable, so we'll see. On the bottom, it's just got the usual regulatory stuff. Made in Canada, no less. Now, I've already taken out the screws. So this is uh, just a pretty big chunk of die cast metal so we've got we have a few antenna cables and there's a sim card reader which uh, you can access through the front this did come with a sim card the sim card was deactivated on the front it just has power and transmit receive leds i assume the gps one is for when it acquires a steady signal gotta love the attention to detail on this this is the audio connector this is the cellular rf connector and they just plug into the motherboard here, but they've got this little piece of metal specifically to keep them from falling out. It just presses against them so that they don't get uh, disconnected in transit or presumably if this is used in a, in a vehicle or something. So they just custom made this little chunk of metal just to hold these two connectors in. Most companies would just throw some glue on it. Actually, quite difficult to get the motherboard out, seeing as there's all these screws and there's a bunch of rubber gaskets on everything, so it took a little while. But eventually I got it out and there's a big thermal pad here. And again, big heavy duty die cast piece, and I uh, forgot to mention, but there's a, a little bit of weather sealing along this too, so it's obviously designed to be in a rugged environment. These are those two cables. The audio one is a 2.5 millimeter jack and then there's this kind of funky looking RF connector that seems like kind of like a standard one but it's extra long I've never actually seen one of these before as for the main PCB it's pretty straightforward it looks like there's an arm CPU handling most of the tasks then you've got whatever this is probably the RF power amplifier oh no no it looks like it's the GPS because you can see there's a little RF cable running right to the GPS connector so that's a uh, GPS module, SIM card, power supply, and just odds and ends. Looks like it's a serial driver. Flash memory. And on this side, there's a Sierra Wireless AirCard 750. So this is a GPRS slash GSM modem. This is what's actually interfacing with the network. And it's just basically a box and power supply for this thing. And I was wondering what this PCV was. It's connected to a little pin header and it interfaces into the card and I, I was like well this is kind of weird and if you pull the card out you can see that it's for the sim card this is a dummy sim card pcb that interfaces to the board presumably just a direct line right to uh right to this little sim card holder it's a nice little eject mechanism where you can Push this and then take out this little module, install your SIM card, and then just pop it back in. This one's designed in Canada and manufactured in Mexico. The GPS module's CPU is made by Epson of all people. I thought all they made were dot matrix printers. On the uh, large electrolytic capacitor, they've uh, gone a little crazy with some hot glue on both of them actually. They didn't put any on this in inductor though. Looking at this, I'm going to just go ahead and assume these are power and ground. It looks like there's a sense cable of some type. Because this does, this trace does actually go over to this fuse. Or sorry, this resistor. So, but it, I mean, it looks like these are the actual uh, power inputs. I'll check to make sure they're not just uh, joined together though. I've determined that this side is ground and this side has to be positive. And based on the fact that it's just got this Texas Instruments simple switcher, step down voltage regulator it should work with a anything from 8 to 40 volts so uh, let me just go ahead and uh, connect something i'll probably have to solder on some leads to this i did determine that this is the same connector as a four pin eps power connector i don't want to dig out and chop up one of those right now so let me just solder something to this real quick 
So it's not drawing much power, but I did figure out that you do need to bridge these two pins, otherwise it won't power on. This must be a voltage sense pin or something. Now the power LED is flashing and it's occasionally flickering the GPS lock LED, so I'm not 100% sure if that's an error or if it's, uh, if it's actually starting up or something. I have a little GPS antenna hooked up. I'll try hooking up a bigger antenna because if this thing works as just the GPS unit, that would actually be pretty cool if it just outputs uh, standard GPS stuff. Use that as a time reference for my PFSense router or something. It's only pulling 86 milliamps, so it's not really drawing much power. I've connected a much larger GPS antenna and I'm just giving it a couple minutes. I'm going to hook up a USB connection too and just see if there's any output. I gave it about an hour to connect and it wasn't able to connect to anything. Serial port showed nothing. USB wouldn't connect. It wouldn't load a driver properly. So I don't know what to do with that was. It's obviously not just a serial port. So I took out the GPS module and it does actually have some extra stuff on the other side, a power amplifier, that sort of thing. And we got this error card. So might as well take a look inside. This is glued in, so I don't think we're gonna get that out. So might as well just try and peel it off. You can see the SIM PCB interfacing with the SIM card slot. Pretty straightforward on the inside. We've got a battery, which is presumably maintaining a connection between power offs. I'm not positive what they're doing with that. So there's a main RF section with this big Renesis. Uh, I believe this is a power amplifier and it runs to a little output connector, which is not actually being used in this particular model. And there's some more RF stuff in this can. And then we've got a pair of analog devices chips. These are the actual GSM chipset. And then there's a part labeled Sierra Wireless. So I assume that's some kind of custom processor. And a little bit of memory, some power supply stuff. And of course, little contacts for the SIM card. And let me just see if we can pop the top off this guy. Yep, it is a little hybrid module. There's quite a bit on there and it's conformally coded. I unfortunately I knocked off a couple little capacitors when I, uh, or resistors when I opened it up. It's unfortunate I couldn't use this as a GPS unit, although, you know, if I really needed that, I could just pull out one of the little GPS modules I have and use it with an Arduino, but oh well, I mean, these things are readily available on eBay. I think I paid like $15 for this thing. I think there's another one on eBay right now for like 15, 20 bucks. So if you really want one of these, you can pick one up, although I'm not really sure what you'll use them for. I, I can't remember, but I think the SIM card was actually specific to them. So I think they actually sell a service with this so that you can't just use it with any old SIM card, which limits its functionality even more because, you know, who's going to have that service? And I'm sure it's very, very affordable. Oh, well, MP GPRS 750 modem. This is what happens when you take out the screws first. 